you have candidates for confirmations. This is a sign that the church is growing, especially when we are lamenting everywhere that very few people go to church on Sundays. You go, you go to cities like Abidjan, like Lome, like Cotonou, like Lagos, and you will have a different story to tell. The church is filled up with people. Do you, do you have some cultural practice in Ghana that makes our church lose its, its people, that makes our church have a different story to tell? Is it those who go to church but lack example, like exemplary life to give the non-Catholics? You come to church, but you lack exemplary life to give to the non-Catholics. Is this the priest? The words of Jesus are valid today. You are Peter. Upon this rock, I will build my church. You are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Repeat after me. Again. Again. Thank you. What did Jesus mean? He meant Peter will be the cornerstone. He meant Peter will be the rock for burden the Christian community. To show his power, Christ Jesus makes use of ordinary men and ordinary women like we here to burden his church here in Sapiman. God uses ordinary men and ordinary women like you there to build the church in Sapiman. You are the pillar of the church. A word to the confirmandi, to those being confirmed today. The seven of confirmation you are going to receive will make you stronger and better Christians through the outpouring of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Is this knowledge you want Pray for it. Is, that, is it wisdom you want? Pray for it. Is this courage you want? Pray for it. Is it understanding you want? Pray for it. Is it piety and counsel you want? Pray for it. Is it fear of the Lord you want? We have to, we must pray for it. Dearly beloved, the fear of God does not mean we should be afraid of God, who is compassion. We should be afraid of God, who is mercy and love. You must fear sin. Sin is the thing we must fear. You must fear the wrath of God. You must fear his judgment and, compassion and, and punishment. Because God's wrath befalls us when we sin. God's wrath falls on us when we sin. My dear people, this is a time you shall claim that we know the truth. The Catholic, the Catholic Church doesn't teach the truth at all. My brothers and sisters, listen, the confirmandi. 
This is a time you shall claim, I say claim, I say claim, that you know the truth. And the Catholic Church doesn't know the truth. What are you talking about? You shall claim everything. You have, uh, you have seen the light. That's all this follow you. You have seen the light. Your mind, your mind, like the chicken, will claim that you know his, it knows more and better than your pastors. Your mind is like the chicken mind. Akoko, wonu akoko no. And you are going to claim you know the thing, you know the Bible more than your pastors. This is a time when people will be talking against the church, against the Catholic Church, and will blame the church for their lack of knowledge. You need the gift. You need the gift of, uh, uh, of the Spirit, uh, guidance of the Spirit to stand up to these trends. Beloved, it is not for nothing that the Archdiocese claims the candidates should be 13 years or above or more before you are confirmed. It is not for nothing that we say you must be 13 years or above before you get a, a sacrament of confirmation because you have a new, new role. Soldiers of Christ and adult Christians. Your new role is you are soldiers of Christ, you are adult Christians. Let the faith let your faith be your breastplate so that you can fight like a soldier to defend your church. You can fight like the soldier to defend your church. You can fight like a soldier to defend your church. There is a saying, everything the Lord does is perfect. He is never, never wrong. He created us, his image, and he was never wrong. I am created the image and likeness of God. You are created in the image and likeness of God. He never makes he never made a mistake. When we fought, it, he ransomed us from the bondage of sin and everlasting death by sending his only son, his only begotten son, to die for our sake. His only son to die for our sake. He made those, he made those ransomed a people of the faith of one heart and one mind. When it started, they claimed nothing as their own. When the community of faith started, they claimed nothing as their own. They had nothing. Their houses, their landed property, etc. Nothing. Everything was owned in common. Yet one was having no want. One was having no want. Though everything was heard in common. They lived exceptionally. And their community was expanding. They invited people to join them in order to proclaim that the Lord is risen. 
Others came to believe because they lived a simple lifestyle. They were united, heart and mind, and they had invited people into the joy of their communion with Christ. They could not stop speaking of what they have seen and heard. Acts chapter 4, verse 20. My dear people, the chief, the queen mother. The church needs people of best practices. They go to church, pray, they seek their truth in everything they do as people who love the church. On the contrary, people who frequent the church are those who indulge in insincerity and insolent practices. Such behaviors are incompatible with their Christian faith. Last week, some, new case, some news came out in the social media about scholarships that are, that are offered by the government of Ghana. I quote, some people pay bribes to get a scholarships award. Students, tuition, fees, and living expenses, allowances, aren't paid, and if paid, not on time. Some, through corrupt means, get the scholarship award and don't even report to the schools. Ghost names appear to bloat the normal on the register, etc., etc. Unquote. These are the woes that beseech the scholarship secretariat. I know a young man who had a get found scholarship and stayed it in, in England. The scholarship was withdrawn after he had met all the requirements by the same people who award he awarded him the scholarship. Where was he to go? In England, where was he to go? He came back to Ghana and, and on a number of occasions asked me to intervene on his behalf because in Ghana it is whom you know. It is whom you know. This story is one of many examples that can be cited. But can a government scholarship be awarded to whom you know? Can a government scholarship be awarded to whom you know? So if you don't know some, somebody up there, you will never get up there yourself. Are we not all Ghanaians? The first or the first, first five objectives of the government scholarship is, quote, award scholarships to needy but brilliant students in second cycle institu institutions based on merit and hardships, unquote. 
However, the well to do people and their words are those attracting the scholarship. This must stop and the scholarships go to the deserving students. This must stop. The scholarships go to the deserving students. When the objective is more than the needy and brilliant students, the purpose is defeated. This is a cry for the Ghana government scholarship secretariat. This is a cry for the Get, Get Fund and, uh, and others which are in the same domain. You sit, when you sit on the money for the poor, they will cry and God will hear them. When you sit on the money for the poor, they would cry and God would hear them. When you sit, say it after me. Again, on the money for the poor. Again, they will cry. They will cry and God will hear them. Today, you are talking of the Divine Mercy Sunday. God's love and mercy is unending. The selfless love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. New every morning, new every morning, great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Again, there are new Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22, 22 and 23. Where there is love and mercy, there's nothing to be afraid of. Where there's love, and there's mercy, you fear, you must fear nothing. Nothing and nothing. Where there's love and mercy. We hear that the Lord give us, giving us peace as our Easter gift. Peace be with you. Was his, was his greetings when he appeared to the disciples the evening or the first day of the week. But Thomas was absent. When he was told, he put up an argument. How can this be possible? How can I believe this story? Jesus has come and gone. I know that. They nailed him to the cross. I, need, I know that. He died. We saw it. This thing is impossible. How can I believe this story? He came to the disciples again. Jesus came to the disciples again a week later, and he greeted them. Peace be with you. This time, Thomas was with them. Jesus said, Thomas, you don't believe me. You don't know I am the risen, I am the crucified and risen Lord. Don't you know that 
the whole world is in my hands. Believe and doubt no longer. Believe and doubt no longer. Thomas proclaimed with all his heart, with all his might, with all his strength. The words that faith alone could proclaim, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Repeat after me. Again. The apparent story that is so charged with meaning becomes a mission. That apparent story becomes a sending story to go out to proclaim the good news of salvation. An amazing thing has happened. Christ is risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you.